Anyway, so this is a corner post. Post. It was put in straight, but the line, uh, tension in the line just slanted it a bit. So you could add a, a string or something and a little peg and just tension it this way. But since this is an internal corner, you see the shape here. It's a weird shape, I know. Usually it's like the outside corner, but in here it's the internal corner. It's not a good idea to put strings or something in here because the sheep will try to eat it, the dog will try to play with it, they will stumble onto it and shit. I usually put like one white post near the corner so I can see the corners. I don't know if you can see on the video. Like the furthest corner there, actually the post is a bit bigger. With my eye I can see it fine, I can immediately tell where the corner is. So there's no post there, just the wooden post. And there's one there. Just makes sense, like, if you have extra posts. I usually put like three or four extra posts in each corner. Because as time goes by, I might uh, discover indentations or something uh, under the line that would allow the dog to escape. The dog is really, really afraid of the fence, even when it's not like, charged, but, but he will crawl under it. He's really clever in that way. So this is the fence. And I have these white posts every 10 meters. In the background, I don't know if you can see them. In the like near the mountain there, that's 15 meters. That's like an experiment. It's fine, but I I needed to add some extra posts in there. That was also 15 meters, and just easier to keep it 10. Just just much easier. I recommend having more posts than fence. So if you have any issues like corners or, like I said, indentations in the ground, you need to go past the tree or something, you need more posts. And, oh, a really important thing is that the line needs to go on the outside of the post. Like here, yeah, that's the outside, that's the inside. So if the sheep, for whatever reason, run through the fence, it will bend, it might come loose from the brackets, but the post will stay, stay standing. And the fence will flex back and will keep the other sheep in. But if the line would be on the inside, I mean if the post would be on the inside. I'm sorry I have a flu, so I might mix up my words. So. Like in here, the line is on the inside and the post is on the outside. That's bad, because when the sheep run through the fence, they just there's no way to get through the fence without running the post down with the wires. They might not, they will not ram the post itself, they just try to sneak by, sneak through the fence. Sometimes they graze, they don't see the fence until it's too late and their head is under the fence and then they just panic and just go through. It's usually just one or two sheep. But as you can see, sheep are back animals, so if one goes through the fence, it is very, very likely the others will follow. I have some calmer ones that will stay in the fence and they will start screaming at the others for leaving them behind. That's how I figure out they're out of the fence. But if you have a nice taut fence, like the tight fence, then there's no issues. I haven't had any escapes this year with my brand new ingenious fencing system, which I'm going to show you now. So first I started off with this really cheap uh, red wire. And uh, it's just like, it was impossible to 
good to get it back together and reuse it. It's like a sim single use product. So in, I invested in a bit more expensive wire and I'm quite happy with it. Here you can see the little shed for the sheep for summer if it's really rainy. They usually just use the, these as toys. They just ram them and play around with them during the summer at least. And this is where my dog eats. I'm just gonna make a super video about this. It's a really interesting system. If you have small trees like this you wish to protect like this fir tree, don't leave it like this. The sheep will if they don't eat it, they'll just scratch scratch it to death. I sadly didn't notice this tree in the right time, but happens. You can see how tight this fence is. Keeping 500 meters of wire tight is a tricky thing if it's polywire. It's basically plastic. Very, very elastic. So you can see a traditional corner here. That's the inside of the fence, that's the outside. The beginning of the wire doesn't touch the ends, that's important for debugging purposes. If you have somewhere the fence is grounding, vegetation is touching the fence or the line has been run down or whatever. And here you can see my tightening system. I really procrastinated on buying these reels. I did try to make some of myself and I just figured it's much cheaper to buy them. And they are the best thing I ever bought. I mean it. <laughs> like the best thing ever. The tightness of the lines. Like check it out. Can you hear that? That's tight. That's how tight it needs to be. If you can play music on it, it's tight. And that's 500 meters of it. These, these are reels that you can tighten. They have these little tabs in here. This one. So you can tighten the fence. Each of these has their own posts. You, you could have like one one of those special posts, but I don't know. I just use this to align the post. Like, you can see the post is being pulled inwards. So I positioned that line to be like the tensioner I mentioned in a previous video. So it's like pulling all of that weight of the wire towards there and just adjusting the post a little bit. I just bought the normal storage box, storage bin from the store. It's with a removable lead. I've used this. No, this is number two, I'm sorry. I've used a similar box, the, the same make, for three years. And it's really very proof. It's been like up to here in water and it's fine. So in here I, I, I put a little piece of wood and I hang the impulse generator on, it, on top of it. That's the generator, the cheap one. It's uh, quite ironic. My fence is currently powered by my cheaper and less uh, quality product uh, fencing generator than I have. The other one, the more expensive one that costs like a hundred years more, that's in the shed. <laughs> because this is better. So I don't know. I'm not like promoting this product, but it's just better. It's technically better. It has more joules of energy it produces. I use an old car battery. This battery isn't even enough to start my ATV, not even speaking cars. Maybe like five years ago it could start a car, 
I just got it from a friend and this is enough to power the fence for it depends on the weather, depends on the vegetation but for like three weeks to one and a half months but I usually check check it and I change it before it runs down I have this cool little meter that I can uh, see how the fence is doing I'm, you can see this uh, being used in an older video I'm not gonna show it again but it's really good, I, I recommend this uh, not this this brand specifically because that's the second one I bought if you leave it on the fence it will fry in in a few weeks but you can use it to test the fence, it's just lamps that shows uh, the charge yeah it's good before this I tested with my with this you know if it gave me a shock then I knew there's a, there's a charge in the fence couldn't really gauge the, the shock but yeah not a good system this is much better and maybe you have already seen but I mow under every fence it's just so much easier first it's easier to put up the fence and second there's no vegetation hitting the bottom wire usually the bottom wire uh, is always touching some vegetation and it's almost useless you can see the line isn't that taut after that second post so if you have corners like these like in here, like a normal post, the wire goes through and everything's fine. But in a corner, you can't really see here. But if the wire goes like this, it's it's like tensioning it. You you can't pull the wire through much of these. If it's like four posts, like a normal normal shape, like a normal shape uh, fence, then it's fine. But in here I have six of these posts, corner posts and it, it seems to be affecting how much I can tension it but this is fine I'll just show you yeah, mow, be, mow below the fence and you'll be fine I didn't use, used to do this in my first years and it just drains the battery and it just sucks yeah and just for paddock management always try to leave in some trees or some bushes so the sheep will have a place to shelter they will feel much safer here they can shelter from the sun from the rain from predators if you don't then just make something up like these white little shades or like a mobile shade structure something like that so what else? I just mark every steel post with a white post these act like a, as a reserve post and also I don't run into them during the night But one really important point is to use like an actual grounding rod. This is one meter tall. You just hammer it in. Sometimes I'm, I've had difficulties getting these out. I've, on one occasion I even had to use my excavator to get it out. But usually if it's, if it's stuck in there, just pour water on it and just jiggle it around. But use these, not like these, like, like these rebar posts that corrode. This is stainless steel, it will conduct the electricity just fine. But those uh, corroding rebar posts, uh, the shit for grounding rods, don't use those. If you have any questions, post it in the comments. I can give you a lecture about this, but I'm going to finish for now. Goodbye.